So let's go ahead and add some code to our .module file. Now again, a good way to get started is by copying and pasting a working example from another module. So let's go ahead and take a look at our .module file in our two minutes folder in our build a module resource folder. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And let's go ahead and take a look at this line by line after I describe what the functions are here. So we have two functions. One is called two minutes menu and the other one is called two minutes page. Now you can tell just by the names of these two functions that functions in a module follow a convention and you'll see this carried throughout other modules as, as well. They're prefixed with the name of the module and an underscore before continuing on with a longer name, more descriptive name of the function. The reason for this is namespacing. We don't want to accidentally name our function something that another module has already defined. So we namespace our functions by adding our module name and an underscore as a prefix. Now there are two types of functions in Drupal, one of which is a custom self-defined function. So if we look at this one down here, function two minutes underscore page, this is a function that we're defining ourselves. This is a, a completely custom function. But then there are also functions called hooks, which are a reserved type of function. And here we have one called two minutes underscore menu. These functions are called at particular points during Drupal's execution to allow a module to add or alter or extend Drupal in some way. The hook for the menu allows us to add new pages to Drupal as well as override existing pages and do a couple of other things along the way. The way you can tell that a function is a hook when you're looking at example code in other modules is that there's some comments right above that say implements hook and then the name of the hook. Now when we talk about a hook, we use the convention hook underscore and then the name of the hook. So hook menu would be when we're talking about the menu hook, just as we see here. Let's go ahead and work through this function line by line. We're not going to go into detail about hooks or exhaust hook menu. We'll go ahead and take care of those in future videos, but I wanted to give you a quick primer so you know what you're looking at and have an idea about how hooks work before we move on. Our goal here is to create a single page on our Drupal site that we can add any content into. In this case, we want it to say, hello world, but you can choose your own text. So we have our function declaration on this line. In the next line, we're taking a variable called items, which is an array, and we're assigning it an array. So you'll see this set of embedded arrays a lot in Drupal. The key in this array is two minutes dash page, which corresponds to the path in the URL that we'll visit in order to see our page rendered. Next, we have a set of key value pairs that correspond to different settings for this page. The first is the page callback and we're setting that to two minutes underscore page. And this is the name of the function that will be called to render our content for this page. The next line is access arguments. And this allows us to set what permissions are required in order to view this page. The type can be a number of different types. This one is menu callback, which means that our page exists but it isn't added to a, an actual menu. But we can set this to various other types that will, in addition to creating the page, it will also add a link in a certain menu for our page. And finally, we're returning the items array. Now, one important thing to understand about the way that this hook in particular works is that Drupal uses a menu registry which allows a higher performance so that this whole menu system doesn't have to be rebuilt from scratch on every page load. The upshot of this is that when you change this 
items array inside of hook menu, then you also need to clear Drupal's cache so that the new pages will get added to that menu registry. Okay, so the next step then is to create a function that will render something for this page to display. So we already defined the name of that function as two minutes underscore page. So here we have a function called two minutes underscore page. And it's a real simple one line function. We're just returning some text that says hello world. Now we could return any type of HTML rendering here and it would display in the page. Now let's go ahead and see it in action. I'm gonna go ahead and copy all of this code and we're going to paste it into our blank dot module file and save it. The next step will be to enable our module. Let me go ahead and enable it and click save configuration. Now during this install process, the menu registry was rebuilt. So our new page that we just added through our hook menu should be added. Let's go ahead and test that out. The path is two minutes dash page. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight that. And we're going to paste that in the path right here. All right, so we see here's our text, hello world. 